Okay, wanted to talk a little bit about the keynote that I passed over a couple of videos ago, um, which mentioned that uh, many people actually have solutions, which um, corporate bot politicians, as, um, as some people call them, will not accept. And what exactly I mean by that? Well, first off, um, I don't think there are many politicians out there, if any, who think of themselves as being corporate bot, um, let alone would really um, like other people saying it about them. And this is not meant to insult anyone, uh, not even, you know, not even the politicians that have done a lot of damage to our country. The fact of the matter is each of us see, each of us sees the world from a rather narrow point of view, myself included. I do not have all of the solutions. <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> I've done the best I can to understand the solutions that other people have presented to me and I have spent a lifetime uh, working very hard to understand the world around me to the best of my ability and uh, there are aspects of the world which I find quite easy to understand uh, for example um, the basics of, of physics and science uh, come quite naturally to me. Uh, mathematics, geometry. On the other hand, something like politics, <clears throat> there are aspects of it which are very natural to me and there are aspects of it which take quite a bit of uh, thought. And uh, business, finance, things like that. Um, again, not my greatest strong point. History, my absolute worst subject. So my brain deals with the things that it can deal with and I get to see the things that I get to see. I don't have somebody else's input and I don't have somebody else's ability to understand. So let me start by explaining first my concept of what exactly is money and what exactly is voting and how these things affect politics the way I see it. Money is delayed bartering. That's putting it very simply, I know, <clears throat> and it has grown into doing a lot more than that, but if you go back to the roots of it, I think um, even the people who are good at history will probably agree that money basically stems from a need to be able to barter um, at different points in time. For example, if, if, if one person is short on food and um, another person has plenty of food, but doesn't want anything the first person has at that particular time then the person who wants the food is going to have a little bit of trouble finding a way to get food from the second person unless that second person just feels like being overly generous now one thing that that can <clears throat> help to help to overcome that problem is the idea of credit the idea that the person who gives the food to the other person may get something back for it in return later. However, if, if, if the person with the extra food gives the food away on the sheer assumption that they may get something back in return later, and then the second person moves away or just, you know, forgets about the fact that it was given to them or doesn't feel that they really need to give anything in return, then the person who gave the food away might be a little upset with the situation if, um, say for example, during that time, during the time after the food was given away, they came across somebody else who was willing to trade something that they actually did want. So as it turns out, the food was valuable to them even though they didn't need it because they had plenty of food. It was valuable because it could have been traded for something else. But if the opportunity to trade for something they didn't want didn't present itself right away then they may end up giving the food away just out of like I said sheer generosity only to end up thinking later wow I shouldn't have done that because I could have gotten something for it myself and and still given the food away to somebody who needed it and you know then everybody wins so here's where money comes in let's say the person who <clears throat> who wants the food has done some work for someone else and the person they did the work for 
didn't have anything of value that they wanted to trade in return for the work. So they accepted from that person some sort of monetary currency, something that they could later bring back to that person and say, hey, um, you know, here's this IOU or whatever the case might be. You know, here's this this thing. Remember, uh, you know, I did this work for you and, um, you know, now, now you've got something I want and I'd like to make this trade. And, uh, of course, then you run into the question of just how much value each thing is that you want to trade for and, and all of these things have to be worked out. And this is where money comes in that um, it's, it's a way of somewhat standardizing the value of work, goods, services, whatever the case might be that we may wish to trade one thing for another over the course of time. And, uh, and if a person has a lot of money, theoretically, the idea should be that they have a lot of money to represent the fact that they have given a lot, that they have worked a lot, that they have mm, helped society in a big way, that they have done something to earn the right to be able to ask something of someone later and still have something left over to you know be able to ask something more of someone else because they've got lots of this this uh, monetary currency which which you know indicates that the world owes them now when you hear people talking about um, entitlement saying for example you know that that a person should be entitled to social security benefits well there are different ways of, of looking at that now some people would say you know well they're saying they're entitled to it because they were born and therefore you know they've got it coming uh, Another way of looking at it is, you know, maybe this person uh, worked really hard and paid taxes and this tax money has been collected so that other people could someday have Social Security benefits and um, their Social Security benefits are being drawn out of the same pool, which is meant for the community, not for an individual. This, this gets into a little bit bigger picture because then we're looking at something that it's not, it's not an individual who has the money it's society who has the money it's the government or some branch of the government who has the money who is allowing this money to be used or spent on behalf of individuals who need something at the time now let's get into voting what voting is voting is a way of being able to represent communication and a way of, of being able to mm, keep track of how much each person has to say in a particular communication that involves multiple people or um, theoretically all of society. So if, if a society wants to vote on something, I shouldn't have any more or any less say in that thing than anyone else if it affects my life just as much as anyone else. Now we do run into the philosophical issue of what affects whose life more. The easy way to resolve that in the case of something like an election is just to say, um, well, who gets elected into office pretty much affects all of us equally. Now it's not really that simple, but there again, some things have to be simplified, have to be streamlined in order to even be made possible and voting is a complicated thing. There are different ways of coming to a consensus and uh, coming to an agreement within society and saying, okay, you know, I will allow this little bit of something I don't like in return for a little of something I do like, or, you know, I will allow the loss of this um, in, in return for the gain of something else or in the hopes of the gain of something else. Uh, money is sometimes invested with the hopes of gaining something in the future and if a person has more money than they know what to do with unfortunately in in today's society at least here in the united states and um, i know what happens in a lot of other countries um i wouldn't dare try to list them off i i'm i'm quite sure i'd be inept at doing that um but but there are people who have gotten to the point as far as money goes that they don't really 
have a use for as much money as they have and they're still collecting more so then they start doing things like saying well how can I use my money as a vote how can I affect the election of people into political offices into the government which is there to benefit the people in such a way that the people put into that government will benefit me personally more than other people that I get more of a say than someone else gets in who gets into office so that the balance of um, as, as I was saying before you know some sometimes people are not equally affected by who is in office that, that that balance could be tipped in the favor of the person who has the money to do something about it now <clears throat> a fair electoral system should limit that as much as possible and <clears throat> unfortunately right now we do not have a fair electoral system we have an electoral system which was intended to be fair one person one vote that was the idea but people end up voting for a name they recognize and they end up voting for someone that they think can win against someone they want to keep out even though they really don't want either these are not fairness in in, in play what's more um, when somebody wants to keep somebody out and they have to vote for someone to represent that wish to keep someone out that person is not being correctly recorded consider the fact that the person who wants to put someone into a particular political political office or wants to keep someone in a particular political office is quite capable of voting directly for that person and saying exactly what they wanted to say I want this person in this office but the person who looks at a particular politicians record and says this guy is hurting me badly or he's hurting people I care about badly or he's hurting the world I care about badly and and their biggest wish is to do something to stop that they don't know who else would be a good person to put in well some people would say well if they don't know who would be a good person to put in then they shouldn't be allowed to vote at all but here's the catch to that they still have an opinion and there may be other people out there who do know who would be a good person to put in who do know who would be good for the world that they live in and who would be good for this person and for their friends and for their relatives and and for other people that they care about and this person may want to this other person may want to vote for a particular candidate that that they would vote for that that the person who doesn't know who to vote for would vote for if they knew about this person but they don't happen to know about them and because nobody has spent the money to advertise this this candidate and make them extremely well known they don't have the name recognition and they don't end up getting the votes just because their name is known so why should this person not be allowed to simply say I know who I don't want this is the one I don't want here and indicate that and and have it recorded properly if if people could do that it would it would be an incentive for politicians to do things that were more to the benefit of the people because the people would then be able to turn around and say yes I like this politician keep him in or I really don't like this politician please take him out since since the incumbent is always going to be or almost always going to be the most well known it does make sense that a person should be able to at least vote for or against the incumbent and if you're going to allow a vote for or against the incumbent it seems only fair that the for or against should also be applicable to other politicians in the race equally well um, I, I also think that term limits are artificial and have been put there not to help the people but to hurt the people because if somebody is doing a good job they should be able to stay in and not have to you know quit because they ran out of their term um, the 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 whole idea of having experience on the job being a valuable thing is sort of defied by the idea that someone who's doing a good job should have to quit because they've started to get that experience so a couple things that need to be repaired any rate um that's that's it for my discussion on uh the difference between money and votes and uh thanks for listening